You know what was really hot? When I was telling you stories about when I fucked that Great Dane bitch, and you were super huffy while pawing about it. So hot. Two gay guys jerking off about humping a girl dog. That was an amazing bonding experience. I have connections if you ever want to try anything. Horses, too. And don't feel bad. In all honesty, bestiality has been around as long as people and animals. It's just modern society that makes it so taboo. As long as you're not abusing animals, it's all good. That Great Dane bitch certainly wanted it, and we both enjoyed it. You know, contrary to popular belief, I'm actually not a big fan of shows like Law & Order. It's not that the idea of procedural cop shows bothers me, it's the portrayal of criminals. I never really found it believable. I'd always look at these things and think, no one is such a crazy, deluded asshole that they're gonna sit there and genuinely believe this shit. That they'll, they'll fucking admit to the things that they're actually doing behind closed doors, even to people they think they can trust. Nobody is fucking bonkers enough to try to justify this shit to the people that they keep around them. And yet, for the past few years, time and time and time again, the zoophile community continues to prove me wrong. They are actually insane enough to believe this shit is okay. I guess it's true what they say. The truth is stranger than fiction. Today, dear viewer, we're getting back to basics. We're not going to be talking about someone like Adago, somebody who was an outraged incel mad at the internet and who fantasized about killing people and fucking their corpses. We're not talking about someone like Caro the Wolf, a fat, greasy, wannabe popifer who looks like they sweat mayonnaise, which is why they can't attract a suitable partner and resort to fucking animals. No, dear viewer, today we're going to some Doug Spink tier shit. Someone who was in a position of authority, who abused that authority to harm all of those around him, whether they be animals or humans alike. You see, that narration you heard at the beginning of this video that was just one of many of the logs that have been leaked from Tao Foxy, the subject of this video. I won't be going over every single thing. That's posted on his new Kiwi Farms thread. If you'd like to see more about that, I'll be linking that below. But this should give you a nice introduction, a good jumping off point so you can understand better the degeneracy this person is intertwined with. So, dear viewer, sit back. Relax and get ready to lose all faith in humanity, because we're about to get into this. Recently, I was made aware of some leaks onto Kiwi Farms of a small bestiality ring centralized in Denver, Colorado. Among the people who made up the small ring, one of which was Kevin Conrad Huke, also known in the furry fandom as Kevin Otter, or Diver Foxy. From what I can tell, there's not much authority that Kevin has. There's not much actual power or influence Kevin has. He's simply an 18-year-old boy who, unfortunately, was caught up in some of the worst things imaginable. However, he willingly participated in much of it. Normally, I would call someone like that a victim. However, I think there's a certain line that gets crossed where you stop being a victim and become a monster. And Kevin, in my book, has crossed that line. I'll just go ahead and read off a couple of logs to help you understand why I'm of that particular position. But if anyone else is not, I don't begrudge you your own opinion on the matter. Forwarded from North. Did you have fun today with my Sheppy girl? Forwarded from Kevin Ott. So much. Heart, heart, heart. You are the best Sheps. Forwarded from Kevin Ott. Hehe. <laughs> Forwarded from North. What kind of stuff do you think about when you're fucking her? Forwarded from Kevin Ott. Heh <laughs> heh. I dunno. Kinda in the moment. Forwarded from North. What turns you on about having sex with a girl dog? Forwarded from Kevin Ott. Erf. Uh. Heh. <laughs> I dunno. Feels good. Given that we have no reason to believe this is a performance, we have no reason to believe this is a lie. It is a single conversation between two people. After all, there's no reason they would need to lie to one another. I have no problem believing that Kevin Ott has, in fact, fucked a female dog. However, I'm not going to focus too much on Kevin in this video. Even though he did fuck a female dog by his own confession, 
the reality is his parents have already been made aware of this situation and I don't think there's anything that I could do that's going to be even remotely close to whatever the fuck it is they're going to do. After that we have Connor Cubis, aka Dribby the Dragon, a participant in the Zoophile Ring who is a former Denver Con staff member and... Oh fuck, what is it? <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no, Jesus, there's, there's a whole fucking Google Doc on this person alone. Okay, okay, another day, another day. This, this video, it's not necessarily only about him. We're gonna, that's a, fuck, you're a video for another day, Connor. I'm gonna get back to you. We're gonna circle back to you and get to you at a later point, but I'm gonna, we're gonna put a pin in this one and I'm gonna continue on. The next participant is North Shepherd, not to be confused with North Akita in Denver. He is the owner of the dog they rape, as was evidenced by the previous screenshot that I have shown you. However, I'll read to you two more things as far as one of their meetups goes that North had posted. This was shared to Kevin Otter by Tao Foxy, and it is a message from North, as is the next one. North. Nuz. Noon is good. Haha. <laughs> My aliveness factor will depend on what happens Saturday night, timing-wise and such. Coda snugs are probably not a good plan with my non-Z roommates around. Shit gets kinda weird. That's definitely better at your place. A little bit later, he responds with, Last minute positive news. Roommate situation will be good for dog wrestling after 1pm-ish. Also, I just made a new leather harness I'm gonna sell. Curious if you'd want to photo model that. But now with all of that out of the way, we can get into the main topic of this video, being Tal Foxy. Dave Dieter, aka Tal Foxy, is a former aerospace engineer. He then switched careers to the massage business, which coincidentally led to a deal that started a spa franchise that was worth millions. Aside from all of that, he's also an organizer for Foxtrot Club, a popular monthly furry party in Denver. Now we're going to read a couple of the logs here so you can see how he abuses those positions of authority to get people to let their guard down. Tao Foxy. Hehe. <laughs> Have you heard of me before? I am legitimately curious if my name gets around. I am kind of one of the few patriarchs of Denver Furry. Jesus Christ, even the scout from TF2 would tell this guy to be a little bit more humble. Kevin Otter. Maybe? I didn't really recognize it when I saw you on, uh... Aiko's Telegram, I'm not sure who Aiko is. Tao Foxy, I run Foxtrot. Tao Foxy, I could probably sneak you in if you were 20-ish, but 18 would be tough. Kevin Otter, heh <laughs> it's okay. You just better keep it going until I can come. X3. Tao Foxy, I hope to. There is a small group of us. I own Foxtrot Club Limited, which is the business entity. Now, as little sympathy as I can possibly have for Kevin at this point, I should remind you that this is prior to him having committed any crimes. As of right now, he is simply somebody who is being approached by someone in a position of authority. I don't believe it would be much of a stretch to argue that Tao Foxy would probably have used this authority to convince Kevin to do exactly what he wanted at the time. However, like I said, there would be a certain point where the responsibility is on Kevin. He should have said no at a certain point. What I'm saying, in effect, is that Kevin became a monster, but Tal was always one. I also want to read you just one more screenshot from the logs. Like I said, we're not going too in-depth in this video. I just want to do one more. This conversation happens after they had sex with North's dog. Kevin Otter, jeez, <laughs> That was awesome. Days like this are my favorite with you. Amazing and weird new things that are awesome. X3. Tau Foxy. S smiley face, mine too. Tau Foxy. Go ahead and send me all of my professional shots too. I'll select and crop them rather than have you edit all of them. I just may need some help on final color correction. Dude, what is our life? 1. Get up. 2. Get too high. 3. Belt music on the drive north. 4. Model a harness. 5. Breed a girl with a best friend. 6. Take ridiculous fursuit photos. 7. Tag team tantric massage the hottest naked boy with an expert Thai therapist. Now, like I said, this video was just a jumping off point. If you want the full story, the full logs, the full everything back to front, 
I've linked the Kiwi Farms thread in the article below. I suggest giving that a read, because trust me, as much as you may have seen in this video, that is nothing compared to everything that they have logged there. However, I do want to end this video on a bit of a different note. See, there's something bothering me. There's something that's that's kind of been bothering me for just a little while, and I kind of want to just get that out in the open because, gosh, it's really a head scratcher, and it's it's been eating away at me for a while, and I just need to get it right out there in the open. See, Tao Foxy here was an organizer for a pretty, well, pretty widespread fur meet in, in Denver. Another person in this ring was, you know, he was con staff at Denver, and it, it's just, it's strange. It's strange. The more they think about it, the weirder it gets. When you think about it as well, Toggle even boldly professed to being at Midwest Fur Fest, even posting pictures with some fursuiters there. And yet, I've also reached out to Midwest Fur Fest on Twitter, letting them know that a known zoophile has been previously attending their conventions, with the intention, by the way, of giving them more information on Toggle. I never heard back from them. I never, never once heard a single word. It was complete radio silence. And as a matter of fact, Anthrocon, until receiving a large amount of public pressure when a free man or not tweeted about Zooier Than Thou, never really had a single comment to say on the topic of potential zoo files coming to their conventions. I mean, it's, it's strange. It's really strange. It gets the noggin joggin, really. A lot of us like to pretend these issues don't exist, but nobody seems to like pretending they don't more than conventions, more than people with public reputations to consider. And that makes even less sense, because when you factor in the fact that if they took an outspoken stance against this, well, people would have far more public approval of them. So my question is, if there are so many documented members of con staff and organizers for meetups who are who've been outed as zoophiles, and if so many conventions are willing to completely shut down the conversation before it's begun, well, I think the question just suddenly becomes, who the hell else is hiding something like this? That, Detective, is the right question. <laughs>